Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall for this update for March 2019. I'm going to keep this short this evening. Uh, there's quite a bit going on in the video so I'll not take up too much of your time now. We'll just get straight into it. Just to say that this month's video is covering a little bit more work on the Wills Victorian Houses kit. There's a new bridge under development um, over on the branch line as well. I'm also going to highlight some work that I plan to do sometime in the future. Let's not say when because you know me, things get put back and back. But it's happening down the far end of the layout with some changes and tidying up that's been going on down there. I've also revisited the conversation on close coupling. I've been experimenting with the Backman uh, vacuum pipe uh, coupling that comes with their coaches. And I also look at another uh, Op, uh, option from the KD range uh, in their number 5 coupling and then to top it all off we have a visitor this month on the layout I don't want to say anything more than that now I've put together a wee segment uh, during the video I've also added a link to his channel uh, in the description below but just to keep the surprise going if you don't look at that uh, information until after you've watched the video that'll just sort of you know Help keep the surprise there as I say but anyway enough of me uh, let's get over to this month's uh, layout update just a quick thank you to all the new subscribers that have come on since last month really appreciated and I hope you enjoy what you see thanks for now and chat soon bye okay so let's take a quick look at the uh, Victorian houses kit that I've been working on the roof has gone on this month and to say that it was a nightmare would be an understatement. It took me probably four nights, maybe five, just to get this right. I'm still not 100% happy with it, but I this uh, extension bit here, these two roofs proved to be very, very difficult. To get the angle correct along here which then met along here you maybe can just about see just down here there's a very slight gap but I'm just going to live with it because I've gone through three three full sheets of the um, the roofing uh, uh, the roof tiles that wills provide just to try and get that one side of the roof sorted so it's, it's job done as far as I'm concerned. So it's now at a stage that the uh, the capping stones or the they're not capping stones. The capping tiles on the roof have just been glued on there tonight. I'll leave that then to, um, to cure fully overnight. At the minute, the roof is removable. I had planned to keep it as a removable option, but. I don't like these gaps and that that are sort of developing, you know, as the, the roof sits there just idle like that. So I think I will, uh, I will glue them down permanently. But, um, uh, the reason I wanted to take the roof off was so that I could get in and maybe sort of to do the detailing inside. But I think I'm just going to do a separate uh, internal build and then I can slot it in up from underneath whenever the uh, the, the whole kit's finished. But I keep it removable for the time being because that way then I can lift it off, take it out to the garage, give it a coat of primer before uh, I apply an actual uh, coat of paint to it. So that's the, um, as far as we've got on that kit this month. Another wee job that I've been starting is just behind that and it's a new bridge for the layout. So I'll move the camera over and we'll take a look at that. Okay, so as you can see, we have the third bridge uh, for this section of the layout pretty much just, it's underway, that's as much as we can say. The initial carcass has already been completed for it, and if I just slide it out, you can see that I am going to be building it in two sections. One will be the majority of the build, which is the, uh, the wall facing us as well as the tunnel uh, section of it as well and then the other side 
is purely the face and that way then I can slide it into position once it's completed and then just glue the other end onto it. Now it may well, hopefully I've done my measurements correctly that everything will sort of align up correctly but if it doesn't, at least if it's on the back side of the layout any sort of slight discrepancies with it will be hidden from general view maybe at some point in the future whenever I get a little um, you know cube type camera we'll have to make some sort of alterations to it but for the time being I think it'll work perfectly well um, initial thoughts on this um, is it'll probably be the stone face as I've done with the other two bridges at the other end but I think along the top here I'm going to do some sort of concrete cement type structure uh, which would sort of suggest that the whole area had, had this um, cement structure put in for the support of the track running across it. Still undecided on that. There's a bridge close to me uh, which carries a railway over, the, over it and uh, it has something similar so I may take a walk down there someday and take a few photographs just to give me a, a little bit of an idea. The angle of this bridge was a little bit challenging to get correct but the clearances are all good for coaches coming through. What I ended up doing was I took a sheet of paper and hopefully you can see on that. These are the two internal side walls of the bridge and this is the um, where the card face currently sits. So what I did was I laid that, laid that in underneath and with a few markings between the board and the paper I was able to get the dimensions that I required to build this and then I could take this sheet of paper away use it as my template on the workbench and just build it all there without having to come back and forth and checking it out and it worked out quite well structural wise there's a few supports on the side just to keep the thing from bowing in and then once the roof actually went on it made it very rigid and solid so that'll be a nice little addition to the layout as and when I get that done but that's another project that sort of is probably running along line in, in line with the um, the wills kit if I'm waiting on a piece of that drying I can be looking at this here and by getting that into place would mean that I can plaster bandage this entire area and if I could work on beyond to the top far corner this would be this entire area uh, scenic in terms of the the rolling uh, landscape so you know we're getting there Okay, so this is probably a little bit of a different view from what you would normally see up in the roof space but what I wanted to show you was some of the other work that I'd been doing not on the layout itself but just in the room here. Um, for some time now there's been an awful lot of uh, what would you call it modelling materials have sort of started to accumulate on the floor and I was beginning to get quite annoyed by it all you know you were having to step over things to reach the layout you were having to hook around you know to try and find what you were looking for so what I've been trying to do is to reorganize the room to make it much more enjoyable to sit in and work in but also that if I am looking for something I can find it pretty quickly now, if you remember back to my Christmas uh, update, whenever I did a full tour of the room, this corner of the room here had a large shelving unit, sort of standing right up sort of to the six foot height. What it did was um, it blocked that uh, that that connecting section of the layout, um, and and what it meant was that. I would have had to have reached round to try and work at any of the, the track work in behind. Plus, it was going to prevent me from doing any sort of scenery work 
down that end. So by taking that away, one, it's opened up the floor space for me. It's given me an awful lot more scope to walk around the room, but it's also given me an additional scenic area to work at now. Now, the ideas for it are very, very early and um, sort of in formulating in my head, but I think it's probably just going to sort of stick with a, a bit of a cutting probably on, on the railway with maybe a bridge running over it, that sort of thing, because I don't have an awful lot of that happening on the layout. Plus, I need to blend it in with the town scene on the left-hand side. Um, so, yeah, there's a little bit of work involved in that. But one of the other aspects of doing that um, it's going to open up uh, scope for me to install some storage in on the layout which to this date I haven't been able to do so let me take you over there and we'll talk about that a little bit more okay so just to help to give you the bearings of where we are on the layout the what you're seeing in front of you will be the main station um, for the layout <coughs> Galgorm Hall and then if we pan right, that line takes us round, round the bend and across our connecting side, which then takes us over to where you will usually see most of my work. But if we bring ourselves back round here, what I want to be able to do now is to be able to store some of my trains. At the minute the trains sit on the layout at all times, I have two sitting on the main line. I usually have one sitting over there and there's probably one sitting off on the branch line too, plus other logos that are sitting up in the shed area. And that works okay at the minute, to a degree, but I'm now beginning to form some fixed rate trains up that I want to run in the layout. I'm not fussed about changing a lot of coaching stock whenever I come up here and I do some uh, train running well essentially all I'm doing is watching a train going round the room and I enjoy that that's what the aspect of the running trains is to me so I'm going to go more for fixed rate trains rather than an awful lot of shifting about of different coach work with that in mind I want to be able to store them off the layout so that I can bring them in as and when I want to use them and take them off again whenever I want to play and use something else. So let's go back to this corner here. What my intention I think is at this stage, we already have a crossover coming from the um, sort of the, the up and the down line. Um, and what I'm thinking is around about here or maybe a little bit further around, I am going to fit a, um, what do you call it? A right hand curve point, which I think if it requires a little bit of a change to the, uh, the the radius of this curve, it shouldn't be too much. But what that will do is then the the curve will follow around this way, and then the other aspect of the point will essentially start to go off scene. And by going off scene, it can then sort of go through a hole in the back uh, in the backboard here. And then let me take the camera around. <coughs> And once coming through the other side, well, I've got all of this space here that I can use for storage. But what I'm thinking of doing is something similar to what we have on this side of the layout. This is purely a one foot wide baseboard here. I'm going to put one in, in on this side here, probably starting from about where um, this, uh, um, this beam is is coming down and then if I run it right the way along to the other side to the very end of the uh, the baseboards where it meets the corner there now that will give me a run of approximately uh, five four eight or nine feet now that eight or nine feet is more than enough to store a logo plus a five or a six coach train now I can't accommodate anything more than five coaches in my um, in my main station. So five or six coaches is all I'm going to have. Maybe the odd seven coach, which I just want to run around, you know, just purely to see a full a full length train running. <clears throat> so that's the plan for this area. Now 
<coughs> excuse me now I have mentioned fixed rate trains and that's the next thing that I want to speak to you about uh, back over at the the desk uh, so we'll go over there now and have a chat about that Okay, so what I've set up for you here are two trains. The first on the left is a class 25 and on the right is a class 40. Now if I bring the class 25 in, it's hauling um, a rake of uh, blue grey coaches. And these coaches have been basically lifted straight out of the box uh, and connected up to the train. If we bring that right in centre, okay, and those are using the uh, standard NEM couplings that come with the coaches. However, what Bachman also do is to provide you with some of these um, vacuum. Oh, I've dropped it. Uh, these vacuum pipe um, couplings. And to be honest with you, I have done nothing about them in all the time that I've ever bought any coaching stock. I've basically just kept them in the box and run with the others. And as you'll know, because as I mentioned this in a previous video, I'm wanting to change all of my stock over to much more close coupling stock um, by using KDs. But I thought I'd give these a bash first, just on these coaches to see how they fared. Now as you can see for those um, two uh, coaches in front of you now, we've got a gap of, well, let's measure it. So there's a gap there of approximately uh, five to six millimetres. Let's bring in the 30, or sorry, the 40. Um, now 
the 40 is set up as I want this train to be in a fixed rake. It's got five coaches, four maroon stock and one blue grey just to add a little bit of interest. And if I line that up directly, what I should have done was put done it the other way around. But that is using one of these to connect these two coaches up. And all you do is you take out the NEM coupling on both coaches and plug these in instead. Now this is only going to work for a fixed rate train. If you want to do some uh, shunting about of coaching stock in your station area um, you're going to have to look at KD couplings but what I find with the KD couplings particularly on the coaches is that they do file on the underframe. Uh, now I have 17, 18s and 19s in terms of the KDs and the 19s, the longest one, continued to file on the underframe. Now there are other KDs that I could probably go for but if I'm running close coupling trains I think this looks really good plus the pipes look really good connecting the two coaches and in terms of a gap well I mean we can put the ruler up there but you can physically see it for yourself it's less than a millimeter now on pulling the train it'll maybe open out a little bit but it's more than no more than a millimeter a millimeter a half at most and it really does give some nice looking running as I'll show you with a couple of shots of it running around the layout now So whenever you see it doing that, you know, on the corners, it really does look quite good. And I think I'm going to go down this route, route for all my coaching stock. I'm going to use these Bachman vac vacuum pipe couplings because, as I said, I'm going fixed rake. Everything can be stored in the storage yard and just pulled out as and when I want to do something. Now. What I'm going to do is show you one other thing in terms of the KDs before I move on and uh, let me just sort of get that set up for you. Okay, so away back in November in my update back then I mentioned that there was a new, uh, a new purchase for the layout but to be honest I haven't revealed it until now because it has given me no end of problems in terms of uh, its running. Now it runs fine but what I discovered Upon opening it was that the deeper flanges on the drive wheels did not like the code 75 track and I had to source some new ones we tried some different options um, David Baldwin from uh, Strathpeffer Junction helped me out uh, with some guidance um, but unfortunately we weren't able to sort of resolve the issue perfectly now it's turned out I bought a set of wheels replacement wheels for this and and they worked out to be the best for it but that's a story for another day but one of the other aspects of it was that I wanted to change it over to close coupling too so if I bring this little unit in yep it's another DMU for the layout um, but it's quite nice because whenever I bought it I didn't realize it but the the previous owner had in, installed um, people inside it so it was a nice little touch and a nice little surprise it's not a bad runner either um, it's a little bit noisier in comparison to the Bachman models that I have but this Hornby example is pretty good plus it's got it's a three car unit um, and the center car well it's just sort of um, getting a little bit of work done to it at the minute but what I wanted to show you were the different couplings and I'll take a bogey off that center car unit and show it to you now. So what I have done with these is to install these are KD uh, number five couplings, and what they come like is is can we get focused in on that? Hopefully you can see it in the light. That little box there is all part of the KD coupling, and you fit it all together, glue it together with your coupling. Uh, inside it and then you can either using the holes provided screw that down onto your bogey or you can glue it into place now I've opted for the ladder 
and again as you can see from the example here the close coupling isn't as good as what it is on the um, the rake of coaches uh, in that previous clip but it's a darn sight better than what it was here's a picture of it um, before and after the couplings were fitted so the difference really is quite startling uh, the issue with these here um, in terms of getting them any closer was the buffer stops on this model aren't sprung buffered uh, aren't sprung the buffers on this aren't sprung there got out eventually so what it means is if it's any tighter and the the two cars are turning on a curve uh, the buffers sort of touch each other and one car lifts off up off the other just ever so slightly but it's enough to take it off the rails and cause a derailment so I've had to leave this a little bit more open but it's another aspect to think of whenever you're doing your close coupling you obviously need to test these on the tightest curves that you have on your track but again I think it's an awful lot better looking but this was really more I wanted to show you that to demonstrate the different type of couplings that you can get now this uh, um, bogey had hmm, have I still got any of them no I think I threw them in the bin because they're disgusting looking so they're the big D couplings you know that Hornby always did on their stock and I suppose most of them did at a time or another but it had a D coupling on there and all I basically done was taking a, a, a Stanley knife sliced it off completely and um, you could probably do it a little bit better again you know and, and bring it right back in but it's it's barely noticeable in underneath now anyway these two uh no actually this one didn't funny this it, the driving car has nem pockets uh but the um dummy car and the center coach don't so they have the old um decouplings uh installed so we had to cut them off that but you can see there's a little bit of a chunky bit in underneath here hopefully um and on the the driving car on the one on the left hand side it's a little bit tidier looking but all in all it's a much better looking thing but look there's a wide range of kd couplings out there for every eventuality there's a certain amount of experimentation is required to find which one is suitable for your particular logo or your particular coach or wagon but if you want that little bit of more close coupling action going on with regards to your rolling stock they really are the way to go or if you're going for the fixed rate option and um, on your coaches try out those Bachmann vacuum pipe ones I really was impressed by it <laughs>